and branding yourself. Are we excited? <laughs> Brittany, can you come up to the stage, please? Brittany. Should I grab the clicker? Yes. Okay. Make sure it's Thanks for having me do this. I'm excited. I've uh, done this presentation before for my small team, but never for all of you guys. This is going to be great. Um, I'm sure all of you are using social media to grow your businesses. It's pretty much what all of us coaches are doing now. But just by a show of hands, how many of you guys like, hate doing social media and are actually like overwhelmed and scared by it? Like, be honest. Right? There's a few of you out there that it's just too much. And basically, the reason why is people are using too many channels right off the bat. You're looking around, you don't have your blinders on, and you're feeling like, I have to be on Pinterest, I have to be on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, and before you know it, you're going in 10 different directions and you're overwhelmed. So what I always suggest to my coaches and to frankly any business that I'm working with, I own a social media agency, is to pick one social media channel that you're really, really good at and stick with it Grow it, build it, get followers, and when you feel like you've really established a base, move on from there. So figure out, you know, which social media platform your story resonates the best with. If you're super visual, Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook are great for you. If you couldn't be bothered with photos and you just like to get a quick message out there, Twitter's great. So these are things that you need to consider. You also need to figure out where your customers are. Different age groups and different people resonate better with different social media channels. On my team, we had a lot of coaches that were over 35, and we're not getting anywhere with Instagram. And it's just because it's a younger demographic. So we were like, focus on Facebook. And it's worked really well for them. And again, just dive right in, trial and error. And once you build up your base on one social media channel, then move on to the next. This is going to get posted in the Connecticut group. It's basically just a fun little explanation using Shakeology of how different social media platforms translate. Um, and it helps to just figure out how to get your message across properly on different social media platforms. A question I get a lot is, I have a personal Facebook page. And I've been told to create a Facebook fan page. But do I really need it? And how do I even go about doing it? The answer, in short, is yes, you do need a fan page. And the reason why is you cannot do advertising on a personal Facebook page. You used to be able to just boost a post on your personal Facebook page and all was well and good, but you can't do that anymore. So if you want to boost your post and you want to get more followers, you need to have a fan page. You're also super limited on a personal page. You cannot exceed a certain amount of friends. So once you hit that, you know, 5,000 friend mark and you get to be, you know, a five-star diving coach and all these people are friend requesting you, you're going to be in trouble. So it's better to start early and convert your friends and family over to a fan page and start building that up because the pros really outweigh the cons. Yes, it's going to be hard to convert people over from your friend page to your fan page, but just be persistent with people. And honestly, if they're not interested, you can't force them. So now I want to focus a little bit more on branding. You've got your Facebook fan page going, or you've got your Twitter page going, or your Instagram, your channel that you're going to focus on. The next thing you want to do, regardless of which social media channel it is, is you want to make sure you're visually branding yourself. Have your nice smiling Facebook photo or your Twitter profile photo, and have nice cover art that really reflects you as a coach. The next thing you want to do is you want to go through these four areas, and I want you all to do this on your own. Again, this will be posted in the group. You want to come up with words that really describe what your character is, who you are as a person, what tone you speak in, the type of language you use, and your why, what your purpose is. Again, pick some words for all of these things that really reflect you. And you want to set yourself apart from other people. Don't look at another coach on your team and say, you know what, she's having a lot of success. I'm just going to mimic myself after her. Because it's not authentic and people are going to see right through it. So put on your blinders, sit down and say, when I talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, when I have a conversation with my friends, when I talk to somebody about beach body programs and Shakeology, how do I talk to them? What kind of person am I? What kind of tone do I use? You want to be authentic in who you are in real life 
on social media. So once you have those words down that really describe you, you need to come up with types of content that are going to reflect your personal branding. I call these buckets of content. I usually start with about eight to 10 of them when I'm first helping a client build their brand because you don't quite know what's going to stick with your audience right off the bat. So for example, with me, I have a little mix of beach body stuff and also personal life. So the workouts that I'm doing every day, the shakes that I'm making, I'm really passionate about food and cooking and recipes, so that's one of my buckets of content. But I also love to talk about the work that I do in social media. And my coaches get really excited about learning more about that too, because it helps them. I also love to talk about my dog. And just like everybody else out there, I'm a real person. I drink beer and I eat burgers, so I do post about that on occasion. And you know what? It keeps me authentic and real because I'm not perfect and nobody is. <laughs> and so those are like my buckets of content. And you just need to go through and be authentic and real with yourself. Again, start with eight to 10 of them. Some stuff's gonna get a lot of likes and a lot of comments, and some stuff's gonna be a flop. And you just need to be constantly evolving your strategy. Now, the next question I get is, okay, I've got great content, I've got my page set up, it looks great, but nobody's coming over to like my page. You just can't expect to have a bowl of water and the horse is gonna come drink, you gotta kinda lead them there. So what you need to do is you need to invite every single one of your friends on Facebook, or if you're setting up a Twitter account or an Instagram account, message them and say, post on your Facebook page, whatever, and say, I set up this Instagram page, or I set up this Twitter page, please come follow me. Or invite them all to like your Facebook page. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that every bit of your marketing materials has your social media information on it. Your business card, the side of your car, if you have a Shakeology sticker on the side of your car, get your social media channels on there. Anything that you're handing out to people, get stickers made up to put on your Shakeology sample packets that have all your social media channels. Our society is ingrained to go onto Facebook or go onto Instagram and immediately follow something. So don't be afraid to put it everywhere. And you should also be coming up with a custom hashtag for your team. So that way you can use that hashtag everywhere and people can easily follow it. The next thing you want to do is you want to keep the conversation going. A lot of the times people get really excited and then they just stop posting. So my biggest piece of advice to you would be tell yourself I'm going to post once every single day. Don't get carried away with like 10 posts every day and then all of a sudden you drop off the face of the planet. One post a day on whatever social media channels you're using. Consider doing social media advertising. It's actually super inexpensive and gets really good results. And just like you have your business activity tracker, you want to be setting goals for yourself with social media. How many likes, followers, engagement do you want to be getting this month? Track it and see what's going right and see what's going wrong. Uh-oh. Oh, Did it go to sleep? No, it's good. It's awake. <laughs> the next thing is content. Just because you have your buckets of content, some people aren't naturally great writers or creative. I get that. You're struggling for content and where to find it. First thing, stalk the competition. Don't copy them. Just see what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong. A lot of the times their mistakes are gonna help you to be more successful. Second, keep it short. One or two lines. There's nothing I hate more and there's nothing people hate more than seeing like a long soliloquy on Facebook. I'm guilty of doing it, but what ends up happening is when you write these big long paragraphs, they get cut off in the news feed and then nobody can read it and your message gets lost. Visual image, two lines. Why? Visual posts generate 60% more engagement. Number four, you want to share things from other people. There are those days where you're just, your brain's not there. You've got nothing to post about, you don't feel like doing with it. Go to Sean T's Facebook page or Sean T's Twitter page. Go to Tony's. They've got great stuff. Share it. The next thing you want to do is ask people for engagement. People are not going to comment on their own. So you can do things like a caption contest, or ask people's opinion, or create a poll, or have them fill in the blank. Get them to comment by asking them to comment. You also can offer exclusive things. Um, create videos, and photos, and tips, and recipes that are only available on your fan page. The next thing, again, is to just be consistent and make sure you're responding to all your fans. 
The biggest way to lose engagement and lose followers is by getting excited, posting consistently, and then dropping off because you took a vacation. Schedule your posts and be consistent. One thing that I do often that works really well is I actually do a little contest. Shake your cup with a sample packet in it and I get people to answer a question. There's no rules, there's no crazy app or anything like that. It's literally just a post. Comment below, I pick a winner, Sometimes I even ask people to register for a free account on the Beachbody website, and in exchange, you know, I pick one random person who signed up for a free Beachbody account, and I give out a shaker cup and a packet of Shakeology. This gets me so many fans converting over from my personal page to my fan page, and it also gets me people signed up for a free Beachbody account so that I can communicate with them in the future. It's a cheap and easy way to do it. The next thing is make sure that you're using hashtags. It's going to be people's ways to find you. But you want to limit your hashtags. Um, one thing that really, again, turns people off, and myself included, is when you have like a ton of hashtags on Facebook because you just shared from Instagram. Don't do it. Before you share from Instagram, edit your post and limit yourself to one hashtag on Facebook. With Twitter, you can do two or three. And with Instagram and Pinterest, it's really unlimited because people expect there to be a lot of hashtags. But it's just important to make sure your message is properly resonating with the proper social media channel. I also want to make sure that you are branding the way that your posts look. Um, it's not just about your personal wording and your personal buckets of content and the message you're getting across, but it's, it's visually how the message is getting across. I try to make my pictures kind of all look like this, and so when people see the picture in the newsfeed, they know that that's coming from me. So make sure that your visuals are consistent with your buckets of content and really brand you. The next thing is, it's so this, this is the one thing for me with coaching that I notice the biggest mistake, is that coaches try really hard to sell on social and nothing is a bigger turnoff. I've, I've asked people, and time and time again, they say, I'm turned off when people try to hammer the hard sell. I try to stick to what's known as the 80-20 rule on social media, so that means 80% of the time you're just posting real, authentic content. If you post up your transformation story, that's gonna automatically get people to wanna be a customer or a coach. If you're posting up like the sales that Carl's sharing on his Facebook page, and you're just sharing that big long list of sales for the month, it's going to turn people off. They're not getting a message from that. So don't tell, don't just sell on social media, tell like a real story. Um, tell a story about you, your coaches, what you're doing, your transformation. That's what's really going to get people to want to be a customer or a coach. This is just a little list of do's and don'ts that I have for, for social media. A lot of what I've gone over is in here. But some of the biggest things are, are being positive. I see a lot of negative comments from people, and it's just, it's going to turn people off from coaching. People come to this because they want to be part of a positive group in a positive environment. So my rule is before I hit the post button on any social media channel, I read over my post again. One, I'm checking for grammar and spelling errors because we're running a business, and you don't want to have mistakes. And two, I'm making sure that I'm not being negative with what I'm saying. And there's been some times where I've ranted and I've caught myself before I hit the post button. There's been a couple times where I posted and I deleted it really quick. It just, it puts a bad taste in people's mouths and it, you just don't want to be negative on social media. The other thing along those lines is deleting comments. I have a lot of coaches that are like, you know what? Someone said something about the way I look or they said something negative about Shakeology. What I tell them is, unless they're just being really mean and hurtful, if they kind of have a general concern or complaint or question, answer it and address it. Because if you can open that line of communication, people are going to respect you and trust you a lot more as a coach. And the final piece of advice is, is don't link your Facebook and Twitter account. They don't resonate well together. They're two totally different social media channels. It, it just looks bad. Again, try to make sure you're having the right message on the right social media channel. That's it. I don't know if there's any time.